Grace, you want to go? Okay, hi, welcome everyone. This is the Q&A um, that's taking place after the 24 hour screening of uh, the Queer Asian Shorts Program Part One. Um, my name is Grace. And actually we have an announcement to make that is um, our shorts will no longer just be available for 24 hours. All our shorts programs are gonna be available for the entire duration of the festival. So from now until August 2nd, um, so please feel free to enjoy them at any time. Um, as I said, I'm Grace. I'm one of the programmers for Wicked Queer. And um, Jenny and I are um, the two co-programmers for this uh, specific program. And I'm very, very happy that we get to share it with everyone here and the entire US as well. Yeah, hi everyone. So I'm Jenny um, from Wicked Queer. And thank you all for listening in. And thanks to the filmmakers who have joined, taken the time to join us today. Um, filmmakers, we've actually already received some great feedback on your work and great jobs on the films. For this Q&A, we will start with some prepared questions and then open it up to the audience for any questions that they may have. So to start off with, um, would each of the filmmakers introduce yourselves as well as the film that you made? Ichi can start first. Since you're on the platform. Hi everyone, I'm, I'm Yichi. Uh, I'm the director of We Need to Talk About the Ring. Uh, I'm glad, really glad to to get selected in Wikri and thanks everyone. I hope you enjoy my film. Yep. Um, hi, I'm Rohan. Uh, my film is You for Usha. Um, so, it, I'm, I'm so excited that first time I will, I mean, I'm not at the festival, but I will still get to interact with the audience. So I would love to know what uh, Wicked Queer audience thinks about the film. Thanks for inviting me for this Q&A. Happy to have you. Hello, I'm Lee uh, Yan Xin, as I'm from Taiwan and I'm here is current 1 a.m. in the morning, so I'm kind of tired. So I'm, I'm very glad to join this Q&A and uh, hope can uh, exchange some opinions from other directors and audience. Thanks. Yeah, thank you guys really for making this time as I know that you guys are all coming from different time zones and we really appreciate it. So to start off with, um, what drove you guys each to make these, your film? Why did you decide to make it? And what really pulled you through the process? Ichi, if you want to start. Oh, oh okay, sure. Uh, for me, um, I think because uh, last year uh, in Taiwan, um, people are arguing about same-sex marriage. And I found uh, uh, my film is really uh, a story inspired my, from my personal life. So. The issue is that I found someday I talk I, I talk I talk to my mom I I found that um, she already know know I have a girlfriend but she uh, even though the uh, same sex marriage law already passed but uh, she still feel not not happy with my girlfriend if we talk about someday after the law we might get married so. So that that's the issue. So my story just uh, talking about the uh, mm, the demand the, the dilemma between between my mom and my girlfriend. And Let's give um, our new guest a second to get connected. And and Rohan, perhaps you can go next. Yeah, so um, uh, so in India, I mean, there are hardly few um, people, I mean, there are very few uh, gay filmmakers, basically queer filmmakers, and most of them are like gay filmmakers. So, you know, most of the time we get to see uh, films about gay men and we hardly get to see films about, about lesbian women. And for a long time, I wanted to make a film with, uh, with a lesbian character. And... Um, uh, that was one of the reason I made you for Usha. And the other reason was that, uh, you know, 
in i, I i'm sure uh, people must be saying this in western countries as well but in india you know we have this that uh, gay this thing only exists in cities uh, it doesn't happen in rural areas or it's it's a fashion it's a city fashion so that thing i wanted to break in this movie that you know it's natural and it can happen anywhere even in rural village of india and even in any class because the character in my film is a laborer on a farm so you know she's a poorest uh, per, uh, uh, person of that village so these things i wanted to you know uh, convey to the uh, audience so that was the reason i made this film my turn yeah yeah okay um my film was make uh, before taiwan discuss about sensei marriage so um it's it's actually a competition for a week that we spend a week on a small island at the south of taiwan and you have to make a film in a week so when i first try to think what film i'm going to film so uh i found that many fishermen in the Iceland is not. Uh, they don't have. Uh, how do I explain that? Because I, I, my memory is that when I was a kid in countries, maybe like like Rohan's movie, that uh, like gay or lesbian things is not that common in country uh, area. So that is why I choose a fisherman and a kid in the Iceland as my. Characters in my movie, yeah, and there's no why I want to make this film because I didn't emphasize the uh, uh, they are both men. My idea is that it's very normal to feel fall in love to someone because their soul, but not their gender. So mm, maybe that is what I. Uh, trying to film yeah that does that it does make sense great so the second question i had was what are some challenges that you had and faced in making the film okay still me okay so um, my biggest challenge was uh, i by that time i i was studying in boston uh emerson college uh uh, I I don't really I didn't really have connection in Taiwan. So making films when I when I when I got back to Taiwan, I have to find find you know my crews and and I build out my crew. Um, yeah, I I I I was struggling when finding my crews because I I I, I didn't have any connection. And the other thing is budget. Always about the budget. Uh, because I, I'm student, so I, I, I don't have, you know, I don't have a lot of money to make a, a film such like this. My short film for most of film, uh, film festivals are too long, and they, most of film festivals don't want to watch, don't want to select my film because it's too long. They don't have slots. So uh, yeah, and so. It's really difficult to find budget and also finding the location. So, uh, if you watch the film, the all uh, all the location will uh, is based on uh, a home, you know, um, and that that is my home, and I'm living now. <laughs> so, so there's another thing. Is, another thing interesting is that uh, when I when I when I was editing my film, and it, it's almost like. Uh, I'm watching my, you know, actors perform performance in, in my house. So that that's the issue. So I, I didn't have any connection and I find locations on my own. So yeah, that, that was really difficult for me. And also the actors, uh, more, uh, most of the actors in my film are famous. Uh, some of them you can see uh, Taiwanese drama. They they perform us for Taiwanese drama, serial drama. So, yeah. And I was lucky that um, my mom uh, uh, went to uh, uh, some 
some I know some some meeting I I, I didn't really know that but they she she talked to that actor saying that oh my my daughter have a uh, uh, have a small small film want to make and would you would you like to participate in that and and she really agreed so that that that, that was amazing so you know that's really and another thing is that yeah yeah um and I really appreciate my mom because uh, even though she she doesn't really support me in same sex marriage, but she still works so hard for my film. Okay, that's it. Yeah. Um, so for me, the challenge was to uh, get enough uh, funding so that I can improve the quality uh, of my film in terms of, I mean, the technical quality. I mean, the, the films that I've made before, we, we used to hardly get any money from my uh, rich gay friends. So you know, they used to support me. So they, they have been seeing my previous films, getting into festivals, winning few awards. So finally, when I, when I wrote this script, my one of the uh, thing was that I want to raise enough money so that I can improve the quality of my film. I want it to look like a really professional film because only when you have professional on your team, you will see the result. And previously I could not really hire professionals. So this was the main challenge. But my, as I said, my, some of my rich gay friends, when uh, two of them, they said, okay, yeah, we like this script and we would like to produce it. And that's when I told him that, you know, but the, this is the budget and I want it. And I told him the reason, the same, that I want to inc uh, get the full uh, professional support. And then that's what they said, you know, that we have seen your progress. So now we trust you. So, okay, we'll give you that money. So getting that money was very important for me. So, uh, but even though that, that was not enough, you, you know, the, the funds are never enough. So. But uh, whatever the money I got, I had to f uh, shoot the whole film in three days. So that was another challenge. For the first time, I was stepping outside. Uh, I mean, my previous films were inside the house. For the first time, I was going out. And that to a village, remote village, where only 30 families stay, taking the whole village there and shooting it uh, out outdoor. That and the third was for the first time I was making a color film because the films that I made before they were all black and white. I love black and white. That's why I used to make it. But when I wrote this script, I saw all the visuals in color for the first time. And so I, I was like, I will make this in color. So playing with the color, that was a, another thing that I, I, I was not too sure how will it turn out because I was quite familiar with the black and white images. But first time dealing with color was a big thing. So I guess these were the only challenges. The shooting was rather uh, uh, easy. It was, it, was, it was quite tiring, but it was easy because the whole village were helping us. I mean, for the first time I mean, in India, everyone watches movies. So even villagers, they, they have, they've been watching movies, but for the first time when they got to know that a film is being, is, uh, they, we are coming to their village to shoot a film, they were all so excited. So in one of the uh, scenes in the film where there's a festival dance happening, we, uh, we included the whole village and they really came, they stayed awake till four in the morning. They had to go for a work next morning, but they were, they were awake till four in the morning to finish that scene. So, you know, there were, there were, the, the challenges, challenge was that finishing this film in three days, that and raising the funds, those were the only challenges because now you get to see many queer films made in India. But as I said, you know, more, many films have very poor quality to, uh, you know, so these were the actually two challenges that I had to face. The rest was quite uh, easy because I got tremendous support from everyone everyone from my crew to the whole village and my friends who funded the film yeah um for me uh, as i mentioned earlier that my film was filmed in the competitions which take take seven days that means i have to uh, sh uh filming and editing in seven days including the music inside the film so um it's very harsh to put everything together to uh, make the film be filmed. So 
um, this is the first is the time. You only have seven days from nothing to a film. And the second thing is that uh, the competition has a limit for the films, time of the films. You have to make it uh, under 15 minutes. So when my script was, uh, when we film by the script, so um, it takes too long. So it's about 25 minutes. I have uh, several scenes that I have to decide what to delete in maybe two hours. Uh, so I have to make the decisions which scenes I should uh, cut it off and what scenes I have to choose is most important to tell my story. So I think the time makes me uh, very difficult to to think more uh, thoughtfully. So I think the most difficult thing is the time and the time limit, seven days and you have to tell your story in 15 minutes. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, actually hearing the challenges that each of you faced in making these films, I'm even more in awe for how they turned out because they're all amazing films. So thank you for sharing that. And um, that's just really amazing. So I have some questions for each of you guys um, based on your film. So um, to start off with Rowan. So one of my favorite parts of You for Usha was its portrayal of the day-to-day -day lives of these women in rural India. Because like you had said, and, and probably like many other viewers probably, I had very little previous exposure to that community. So my question is, how do you form an understanding of the lives of these women in rural India to make this film? Sorry, say, say please, uh, can you repeat the question? Sure. So how did you form an understanding of the lives of these women in rural India to make a film, make this film? Um, how do you do your research? Uh, so uh, there was there was there was no research actually. So um, when I when I wanted to make a film about a lesbian character, it was just only it was just that she is falling in love with another human being. Actually, mm -hmm. the, the gender didn't matter to me. So uh, that that so I didn't really have to do research for that. So. Uh, but the one thing that I wanted to portray in this film was even though this woman is uneducated, literally, uh, she's poor and she's from a, a small village. I wanted to portray her as, you know, someone who is who wants to explore this new attraction. I didn't want to make that character a victim. That was important because, you know, most of the time if in India, if someone else wanted to make this film situated in a small village or sexuality, then a woman, they would usually make this character a victim and the film will have a sad tone to it. I just didn't want that. Even though this woman doesn't know what it is, it's called sexuality or, you know, she has this, uh, there's a term to it. She doesn't know anything, but she's, exploring it that was the main thing for me because if when i was a child and when i had this attraction for this boy i had no idea about the word gay or anything i just wanted to explore it i wanted to spend more time with that boy and it was a happy time i mean i never felt that i am the only one in this world or why it's happening with me i didn't feel like a victim and this is what i wanted to portray in that film and falling in love, even though it's the same gender, love is not different. It's not different for any gender, for any couple. So it was just falling in love with another person. So I just wanted to portray those emotions which I felt when I was attracted to this person. It was just that. So I, I, my, all my base was just those feelings that I had when I fell in love. So I just used those and made this film because uh, when we had the first screening of this in Mumbai, 90% uh, audience there was a heterosexual uh, wow. audience. And when they saw it, even straight men came to me and said, thank you for making this film and thank you for making Usha so strong and, you know, making her empowered at the end of the film. So that was my whole point. I wanted this film to have something more than her sexuality. So, you know, uh, so everyone can enjoy because even in India, uh, even though the law is not there anymore, but people are not ready to come watch uh, a queer film, out and out queer film. So that was another thing that if I add something more to her sexuality or her life, 
it will be more it will be seen widely so those were the points for me to form the story yeah i think that definitely came through usha feels like a very full character like you say and definitely like I said not a victim at all and and that's something we really liked about that film as well yeah thank you so yeah shin um one question that i had for you was it seems like the ocean is a constant theme and title we see it in the scenery in the plot and even in the main character's name Yep. Um, what is that symbolism of ocean in this film for you, and why did you choose that? It means the name. Yeah, this I guess name. it's part of it yep. too. Yeah. Uh, I think the title is represent the uh, uh, sea and the land, and like rotate, uh, rotate in times like they come close and get away, and it's just like the both of them. Uh, their relationship because one is a fisherman. She, he has to go uh, out to the seas, and they can only meet when he come back to the small island. And why his name is Ocean is because he is born in the country, so uh, in the the small village on this small island. So uh, he only knows what he knows just. He, all, all his life is on this Iceland, so he don't. He feels like uh, he. I I think that he want to explore more things in the cities, but he cannot because he was locked in the Iceland. So that is why I make his name like oceans, and uh, yeah, I think that is why I made his name oceans and. Because uh, and the and the title of my film is title is because uh, trying to explain their relationship that one is a fisherman have to go out to the sea. Yeah, yeah, that, uh, that makes a lot of sense. Um, Ichi, so one question for you I had was, um, and we need to talk about the ring. Uh, clearly, it's centered around the difficulties for conservative parents to fully accept the queer identities of their child, particularly in a Taiwanese context. And uh, I noticed that up until quite late in the film, it seems like the film could have gone either both ways and that the parents could have either accepted their child's relationship or not. And I was just wondering, how would you describe the ending that you did end up choosing and why did you choose it? Okay. Mm, okay. It's, it's an interesting question. So I would say for, uh, yeah, uh, the film starts from, I, I know that's my mom's, uh, that's what my mom is worried about. That's why I really want to tell this story because I found that it's really it still have time. Uh, it, you know, parents. Um, it, it's still. You know, pa parents have uh, need some time to really accept the 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 sex sexual uh, accept the sexuality of their 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 children. Uh, and uh, but for them, they. Then, um, for them, uh, in terms, they they love their children. So so so, when the law when the law pass, uh, uh, it's a time for them to to really under uh to start accepting their children. So so, the the law is important for uh, It's kind of like uh, it forced our the uh, Taiwanese parents to to really uh. To really see, or oh, to know, it's time for us to accept our, our children's sexuality. That that's the issue. So, so that that's what, yeah. Yeah, that, that is quite powerful. So we yeah. have. Mm -hmm. Oh, so so sorry. So, uh, because um, uh, so why I want to choose this uh this ending because I don't because I I don't know uh it will be a good thing or a bad thing in the future. It really depends on different family, but it, it's, a, it's a good topic for us to think about our future and uh, after the law passed. So yeah, that's it. Yeah, thank it you. Sounds like you have an optimistic vision for the future. Yeah, kind of, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Great. So there are a few audience members with us. Um, I would like to open it up if anyone on the call has any questions for our filmmakers.
I have a question. Um, I guess I'm just curious about like, uh, you know, these filmmakers, I think the films were like really well done. And I'm curious about, you know, kind of uh, where you kind of see yourself as artists. And like, you know, I feel like there's so many people are making films these days. And there's a big question, like existential question of like, why am I making this? Who's going to see it? What sort of difference does it make? And I guess, um, you know, do you feel like with these films that you kind of come to kind of an answer about that? And then also kind of like, what is your plans going forward, you know, with this, you know, if, if you have kind of a feeling of like what your purpose is as a filmmaker going forward? Okay, so um, let me answer that. So, um, with my short film, um, uh, for the first time uh, in India, short films were released in theater, and my film was one of them, uh, one of that package. So, it was through Kashish uh, a Queer Film Festival, which happens in Mumbai. So, um, they released f uh, five of their short films. Uh, in theater, in theater for uh, regular people to come uh, come buy ticket and watch these films on big screen, so that happened. So that that was quite quite a surprise for me. You know, usually it happens with features, but for me it started with short film that it was released in theater. So that was interesting. So, um, but uh, we want to try with my film. We want to try to put it on OTT platform. So because there are now a few platforms in India, they they take short films. Uh, so. We want to try our, uh, try getting it out there, so you know uh, the, the 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 film is on a better platform, and my producers can get some return out of it because usually short filmmaking is just to create your portfolio. So I'm making this short film so that you know I have this portfolio and I uh, hone my craft because I want to make a feature film. I'm I'm working on it. We we just finished the finished the script of feature, but now uh, I'm translating it. it into English because some of the finances they don't understand Marathi, my which is my mother tongue. So I'm translating it into English. So I have the goals of making feature and becoming a feature a filmmaker because I always wanted to tell stories. So I always wanted to make films uh, because it it actually started when I watched Jurassic Park in theater. I was so small, but I used to watch movies. But you know, for the first time when when I saw that movie, the camera movements, the sound that really made me interested in it. I didn't really understand movie that time actually because I was just uh, I I guess I was six six or seven. I didn't really understand, but I I, I loved the ca the way camera moved and the sound that really made me feel like you know I want to do this sometime. So yeah, I mean, of course, with my work, I want to become a feature filmmaker, and um, yeah, that that's my ultimate goal. Me? Uh, uh, how do I say that? The 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 story about the, the this film is my first directed film, and also is the only one. For now, because I usually be producer more than directors, and I also not that much time filming feature films. I spend more time in documentaries about cultures or histories. So, uh, to me, is the my film is like uh, it's just like I want to try to think, uh, try to. Uh, try to think that uh, try to find my limits how how can I do in as a directors because I always be producer so uh, always uh, make directors wishes come true but I never try to be a director so that is this is my first directive film and to me I think the furthermore uh, what I want to do in the future is to find more uh, stories that can that really makes me feel touched and try to make it from documentary 
into feature films. Yeah, because when I film in documentaries, they, there's so many stories that true people that living in this world, what happened in this world that is very touching. But sometimes those stories cannot be just, uh, cannot be, um, just those stories can be better when you use feature films to explain those stories. So that is what I will keep doing in the futures. Yeah, thank you. Uh, for me, uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, I would say, uh, I, I don't want to uh, con constrain my film in, in LGBT, LGBTQ um, topics. Uh, I would like to say, uh, for me, being an artist means first you have to something to tell. Uh, the other thing is uh, your your talents of artistic uh, skills. Uh, you you have to think about how to how to make your film uh, spatial. So uh, for me, I, I don't want to really be a feature film director, but I would like to make my film short in the future. Uh, and uh, uh, to be honest, it's kind of tired to be a film director. You know, you have, uh, the issue is that you have to keep yourself um, energetic to tell a story. That's really difficult for most of the filmmakers. So uh, I, I would like myself to be more, um, more active to, to gain, to obtain new thoughts of different kinds of film. I don't really want to strain myself in a specific area and I want to be to make different kinds of film in the future. So that's my answer. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Alex, for that great question. Is there any other audience member that would like to ask anything? Um, actually, I had a question for uh, Rohan, for you, for Usha. Um, so how, how did, how, were you able to, did you face any issues with, the, you were saying that the law, it's no longer legal, right? So did you face any issues with showing your film that has a, um, you know, queer theme to it? Um, were you blockaded at any point? So, uh, no, I mean, I, uh, what I meant, I, uh, sorry if I uh, s said something in a wrong way, but actually the law, the, 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 the gay law, the uh, 377, which made all the queer people criminal, that's gone now. So we wow. are no more criminals now. So it's, it's all legal now. But even though, you know, the, the, the audience are not ready to watch out and out gay film. So... Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, one of the one of the thing that really bugged me during the shoot was we were shooting in this small village, and we didn't really tell them what the film is actually about. It's about this woman exploring her sexuality, because we were not too sure how the um, uh, villagers will take it. So uh, and because we were shooting there, and we didn't want any problems over there. The whole crew was there, all the equipment, so we didn't want any problem there. So we didn't really tell them what the film was all about. And we shot and it was easy to actually hide it from them because the film also had this uh, 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 subplot of Usha trying to learn. So we just tell them, told them that uh, the film is about this woman who wants to learn. So they, they were like, okay. But then <laughs> when we had the, uh, but the, the, the scene where Usha is being um, uh, taken advantage uh, by this man, um, so we shot that I wanted the Usha and the motorcyclist to really perform that scene off screen though we don't we never see that we only see this boy who's shooting them so I wanted them to really perform that for so that the guy who who's shooting them the actor he can really respond properly so the whole village was there they were all seeing it there, there was a little hesitant I had 
because th- that was the some that was really intimate scene and how this because we couldn't really show the whole village away from where we were shooting because they wanted to see how films are you know they they shoot films so they wanted to see everything so we still shot that uh, but when uh, we had this first screening in mumbai the whole village c- came to mumbai to watch the film mm-hmm. and that's when i was like okay now they are going to get to see everything what is this film is actually about and uh, uh, we were really i mean even my crew was little uh, uh, scared we don't know now how this all these people going to react in the theater but thankfully when the film ended the 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 teacher of the village school and even the head of that village they came they both came on the stage and they both were so happy with the film that they 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 said ki please bring this film to to our village we will hire the theater over there we will have a screening for rest of the villages nearby villages so yeah. that they can see this film and see you know uh, what they shot in our village and uh, they were really happy with it so i thought you know the even though so that was one of my uh, issues that you know i want to make this film accessible to regular audience who watches shitty commercial cinema i want this film to be seen by them so when villagers felt that that they could just watch it and enjoy it that was the thing i wanted to do with this film and uh, uh, i guess that's what that that was that was the only problem i i was uh, going through when we were shooting in the village though we village whole village was helping us but you know i i always had that what if they get to know what is this film is all yeah. about when then how will they react to it that was the thing but when i saw their reaction it just completely changed so this is what i wanted to you know show that you know it doesn't matter that you are from a poor class or a high class even poor class people illiterate people understood this film and they appreciated it so the way you make your film that is important and if it's really a, an honest film it can reach to a regular rural audience as well so yeah no, it's really that sounds wonderful it's it's so great when a community um comes but like to support you and yeah. so yeah actually going off of that um to uh, the two other filmmakers did you also have some sort of uh community support community uh, backlash any reactions that you faced in your immediate communities no that's very interesting also um well we also we actually have a question from the comments section um so i will read that out loud to you and this question is for rohan um so we have a question from Gael saying i was wondering how you were constructing the connection between the landscape poverty and the sense of sexual exploration in the relationship um there's also some back, uh, background for the question uh, she says i was wondering if you had satya jit ray in mind uh when you were making your film because you mentioned approaching it initially in black and white and you seem to be creating a very rich visual language around the rural landscape wide shots with the horizon taking space the fields um i realize it's a quite a long question so i can i can repeat it if you like yeah so i no i read the I read the question thank you ah, okay. so um th- this is very interesting actually that you know uh, this person is saying that if i had satyajit ray in my mind apparently the first award this film received was satyajit ray award in london for best short film so uh, yeah many people actually said when when they saw this film said they 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 thought of satyajit ray so satyajit ray was one of the influential filmmakers of india in uh he made black and white films so his film apu trilogy was one of the films of india that won palm door at khan and he he's one of the indian who won oscar uh, not really an oscar but life achievement so yeah his films were his initial film the apu trilogy was shot in a small village so yeah uh, so i didn't really ha- ha- had satyajit ray in my mind i just wanted to create my own visuals but yeah people find that similarity that's uh, really that that's, uh, that's really a compliment i guess but it, it just yeah i mean uh, when when we went to uh, uh, um, when we went for reki to um, select the locations 
when i wrote the script i had a village in my mind which was actually from my childhood so all the visuals i had while writing the script was from my childhood but when we actually went to that village to finalize the location suddenly i realized that this village has changed it's it's not the way it was in my childhood and now the all these visuals were like all useless and that's when we had to select another village so the the, the village that we actually shot they didn't really have uh, rain that year so there was it was all dry and the village that i had in my mind it they have river so there, there's all greenery over there so my dop was very happy that oh there is greenery so we can have this interesting shots but when we selected this other village where there was all it was all dry and mountains my dop was really not happy and then he 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 was saying that you know okay we'll shoot interiors here and outdoors there and i said no we are not doing that we only have 3 days it's in our hand to make this uh, visuals beautiful even if it's dry so let's do that let's show this romance in a dry land and let's make it's in our and let's make it look beautiful on the screen so yeah i mean it was just uh, the 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 love for visual that made me uh, compose this visuals so yeah thank you for that question yeah. Actually, for Ichi and Yunshin, did you guys have particular filmmakers that you were inspired by to make your film? Uh, for me, uh, uh, yeah, there's a Japanese filmmaker. Ah, uh, uh, oh, I forgot. <laughs> but but just uh, wait for me. Sorry. No worries. Yunshin, did you have any inspirations, Yunshin, in making your film? Yeah, I got it. Yeah, uh, I am inspired by a filmmaker, Japanese filmmaker Ozu a lot, because uh, for me, I I I like uh, uh, you know his story just. Uh, Everything is. Uh, he talks about uh, marriage a lot, and uh, the way he he sh he shoot the film is really quiet, and it's uh. But you can you can see a lot of interesting things in in every everything in in each part of the 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 film, and and I kind of uh, I would say uh we need uh my my film is. Uh, the way I shoot my I, I shot my film is almost uh is a little bit like Ozu because the also uh we our story uh my my film is also talking about a, a social uh a social change in our in our society and and most of he his his films talks about yeah. That kind of things in 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 his film. So, uh, the way I shot my film, uh, I really, I I take his film for reference a lot. And yeah, I watch a lot of Japanese films. So, so the way I shoot my film almost a little bit like Japanese style. I I don't want to make uh uh use a dramatic ways to tell a story because the story is more Social base, so I I you I like to use a quiet way to shoot film, but uh, but put some interesting things in 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 scenes. So so he's my favorite direct, film director. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I definitely can see that. Okay, for me, uh, in Taiwan, uh, I think is Edward Yang. Uh, he was a, a very famous director. Uh, he's not longer. In, uh, he's passed away on two thousand seven, and and another director is uh, a Japanese director. Kitano uh, Takashi. Kitano Takashi. Yeah, both of them filmed the characters in their film very um, naturally. Just like what the characters in our life, just you can see those char characters in our around our life. So 
as I mentioned, I film more documentary. So I think that to watch people in my life, different kinds of people in my life is what I enjoy to do. So through their movies, give me the feeling like uh, watching their film is, is like watching a documentary film about those characters in the, the, in the movie. So I think that makes me uh, try to make my film like it's just like a documentary that I'm watching two people's happening, uh, happening some stories in a small Iceland. Yeah, I did think that your film was really natural and that definitely came through. Um, are there any other questions in the audience? Okay, I see you have another question. Do you want to ask it yourself or would you like me to read it out? Seems like it's more of a, a comment over here. Yeah, I, I, can, I can if you want to <laughs> just say it out loud. Well, I was just, uh, just thanking you, Rohan, for answering. And um, yeah, just saying, like, I was thinking about Ray, you know, just, just the, it's the way you're lingering, you know, on certain shots. And there's just a lot of space for pausing and reflecting, um, which, uh, you know, it's more conceptual um, reference to, to Ray rather than, you know, you kind of uh, really using his. Uh, his, you know, almost his poetics. Uh, I was just thinking of that, you know, how to uh, pause in a way that's productive, I think. Um, so that, that was that was kind of uh, what, I, what I had in mind, you know, other than the thematics and where it's shot. Um, but yeah, I just, I just appreciated how subtle it was overall. Uh, I think you approach things really uh, carefully and without being, um, too over explicit and I thought that it worked very nicely that, that's all thank you thank you for your feedback all right well with that if no one else has any questions I know it's getting very late over where our filmmakers are so I'm uh, very want to be very conscious of that um, I'll give it maybe few seconds here if anyone would like to ask one last question otherwise we can let you go and again thank you so much for uh, staying up answering all of these questions uh, submitting your films they were all wonderful and um, just wanted to reiterate here that all our shorts programs will be available for the entire duration of the festival from here on out um, so until August 2nd uh, 11 p.m. Eastern time. Um, so yes, please, by all means, check them out, feel free. And there is also a Queer Asian Shorts part two that's happening uh, next weekend. So be sure to keep an eye out for that one. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. All right. Have a wonderful day, everyone, uh, or evening. <laughs>